will pass. Now. In our purchase or pass segment this week, we take a look at another investment property and decide whether we think it's worthy of a purchase. As always, we're assuming the location is a given, it's more the finer details that we're trying to analyse. Now this week we've got a two bedroom unit with parking, 7.8 kilometres from the city and 700 metres to the local action. It's a, in a blonde brick, brick block of nine units which isn't that attractive. The unit itself is on the top floor and faces north so it gets plenty of sunlight. It's in good condition and, and has a balcony for some outdoor living and the strata fees are around $1,200 a quarter. And we'll obviously get some uh, pictures up there but what are the uh, initial thoughts on the description? I don't mind it. I mean, the, the initial purchase price and the initial um, rent look quite attractive. I mean, we're going to talk about the strata levies in a second, but from initial thoughts of the photos I've seen and, and also the, the way it faces and also the, um, the rent you're getting for the, for the purchase price, I like it. Yeah, so I mean, certainly all those pictures, it's perfectly livable. There's plenty of trees on the background, bit of ocean views and the rest of it. So uh, generally it does look uh, pretty good there. And one of the things it said in the advert was um, pet friendly. Now with a lot of single people these days that not everyone's getting married in their 20s like the old days, pet friendly has got to be another bonus as well, hasn't it? It is for people like pets, um, for people that don't like me. I hate them myself, but... Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm not a huge fan of living with pets myself, mate, especially in an apartment block. Um, but I mean, yeah, for people that want to bring pets, it's, it's a big plus. So obviously the, um, the blonde brick is not uh, is a bit of a negative there. It doesn't look that pretty, but again, that could be rendered for a price. So really it's the strata fees. Now 1,200 bucks a quarter, we'd probably normally look at around 750. So an extra five or 600 bucks, do you think that makes a difference? It makes a huge difference. I mean, it's more the outgoings, Chris. It's not just the strata levies. It's, but the strata levies are a part of that, obviously. I mean, you've got your rates, you've got land tax that comes onto it as well. A special levy that comes onto it as well. But um, I mean, it's, it's got to look at all the um, outgoings as far as what they blend together to make it affordable or not. Yep. Yeah, but the other thing with this one though, I thought that the rent wasn't, was quite attractive at 650 against 695. It's, it's getting up towards 5%, so I did like that, and that will make it very affordable as far as you know, the strata levies. Yeah, and I mean, the big thing is I'm just doing my accounts kind of, I'm trying to, like we're only a week into the year and I'm trying to get my accounts done in advance to make sure I know where I am with things. And, a lot of my expenses used to be about 1% of the property value, now they may be 1% to 1.5%. Yeah. So again, another 500 bucks is suddenly another two grand a year. And sure, it's tax deductible, but it does start to mount up with all the other figures, doesn't it? It does, and, you, and you've got to try and make sure you're getting the growth out of the property for the maintenance fees you're paying. I mean, ultimately, a charter levy is a maintenance fee, so you're maintaining your asset, therefore you're trying to maintain your growth to make sure you can pay yourself back. Now, the other thing I thought I'd bring up is, look, if they're raising money to maybe put on another level or do some even bigger balconies or glass balconies, sometimes that can be a good thing. So rather than raise 10 grand on a special levy, they might add an extra 500 on for the next few years. So you do need to look at the, the reason for the high levies, but if it's just generally they're not doing anything in their high levies, it's probably not a good thing. Yeah, and, and that comes into it. I mean, if you're going to be a person that holds that property for a long period of time, Hopefully, if you're a good part of the body corporate there, you might say, well, yeah, you are going to put something in the property in the next five years. And if you're going to hold the property for 10 years, you can be part of that improvement, yeah. So purchase or pass for you? I said purchase. Okay. Well, this property does tick a lot of the boxes, but cash flow is already negative in those inner city areas, and strata fees over 750 a quarter do drain the cash flow. So for me, until I see the strata reports and see exactly what they're putting into it, I'm probably going to pass on this one for the moment. To look at uh, some of the other properties around the country. We're joined by Tom Panos in our Sydney CBD studio. Welcome, Tom. Hi, Chris. How are you going? Very Tom. good, thanks. Very good. How are you finding the market at the moment? Yeah, it's hot. There's not enough stock, and uh, it just means the demand supply curve uh, is forcing buyers to pay top dollar because there's not many properties to pick up from. And I think if you're a buyer, you'd be hoping that spring comes very, very quickly. And if you're a real estate agent, you want spring to come quickly as well because there's no point selling one property and having 10 people on there. Agents need turnover and buyers need properties. So we need stock to come on. We need this election uh, over and done with and we need people to start moving forward. And again, I think there's going to be a lot of people waiting for that election to happen. But again, sometimes it's better to get in now because who knows what could happen and maybe there'll be another reason for people not to put property on the market later on. 
Correct, Chris. There's no logic to waiting or, or, or hanging on or going forward. The point is it's just another event. Uh, it's just another day. It's not going to affect people uh, voting and whether they're going to buy or sell a house on that day, on that weekend. Uh, but people are people and people seem to follow what the masses do and uncertainty. And that's why we go into a holding pattern at election times. Exactly. Now, the first property we've got something up in Queensland. Correct. The first one's in uh, Chermside. We are talking about... Uh, two bedroom units there, um, they're getting $400 a week there, off the plan. We picked this one, it was advertised in the Quest newspapers, Chris, and we particularly liked them because of the rental return. We're talking about their uh, $400 per week. Uh, Brisbane is a good marketplace, it's seen good capital growth in recent times, it's had a big correction over the last couple of years, it's been affected by of course the economy, but it's also been affected by uh, the bad floods and we're seeing good uh, buy demand and we're seeing good price growth and this is a great opportunity at that price bracket, 384000 Now we've talked about pros, the pros and cons of um, off the plan and obviously there are kind of, it get, does go both ways but of all times to get into off the plan is generally when most people believe the market's going to rise, isn't it? Absolutely. That is the time and that is when you've got the uh, opportunity to be buying with a bit of a uh, profit in there. So I think that uh, people in this price bracket, under 400, Chris, you know the kind of properties that we talk on the show every week across Australia, to be able to be buying in a capital city uh, new properties. Uh, it's got quite a bit going for it. It's an eight-level building and not too far away from uh, uh, the CBD. It's in the Brisbane uh, northern CBD there. Um, I think that budget, $384,000, I can't remember the last time I auctioned a property for three hundred and eighty-four. dollars It doesn't get a lot. I saw one in, uh, in Bondi for a friend, 200 metres from the beach, they're quoting 400 deceased estate, two bedroom. They've had something like three or 400 people through there, so uh, yeah. I don't think there's any chance of that going for four hundred. dollars yeah. we're, uh, we're up to Victoria now, or down to Victoria rather. Yeah, Victoria, uh, Matthew Scafidi, one of the agents there from uh, Noel Martin, is a guy, I've got a good relationship with him, and he told me today that the owners of this property, before they renovated, Chris, they had a focus group. They got 30 people to come in and get their views on what would be the best design and layout for the home before they began their extension renovation. So 30 people's opinion, and it's not a bad idea because a lot of people, Chris, renovate a property the way they want it, and when it comes time to sell it, no one likes it, but the person that renovated it liked it. These people, they said, let's work out what the market wants and then let's produce that product. The result was that they created a 30 square metre extension and that's what's on offer with this property. It's going to public auction on the 20th, and we are talking about a price guide of uh, above 1.1 million at 1 Thomas Street, Mitcham. Tom, that's one of the cleverest things I've heard in a long time in terms of marketing property. I remember when we did the, uh, the renovators program, we were telling all the contestants, get loads of agents, get their opinions before you start a renovation to learn the demographic. But that's going an even better step to get 30 people that could be potential buyers or renters and hear it directly from the, the horse's mouth and what people want these days. Absolutely, and they, were, they weren't just, you know, 30 brothers or sisters. They got people from schools, uh, I think from sporting clubs. They got good, diverse opinions of people. And let's not forget, Chris, these are the people that are going to be coming through your open for inspection in a few years' time that are going to be putting their hand in their wallet to buy your home. I say, if you're going to renovate, do something nice but also do something that someone's going to want after you. That, that's um, a great idea there and, and certainly for the few hours or even if it's 10 or 20 hours, definitely uh, well worth spending that time. I guess the, uh, the other thing happening at the moment is uh, the block is uh, up for auction as well, isn't it? Correct. The 27th of July, so we're talking about two Saturdays from tomorrow. That's the big day. Um, tomorrow and Sunday is a special day because what they're doing is allowing the public to inspect those properties. I think the address officially is 142 Park in South Melbourne between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. You can go onto uh, the Herald uh, website, our Masthead website, and actually have a look at some sneak preview photos. But if you want to see the real thing, you can go there. It's, it's going to be a rush. There's going to be a lot of people. I mean, there will be people from all over Australia that are making it a weekend and being there. Uh, one of the agents there 
from uh, Hocking Stewart already has had 300 people through uh, his apartment. Uh, I think they've got four people registered already. Uh, it's going to be a success, Chris, because this time around the block is being auctioned um, at a time that the market's absolutely hot. No stock on the market. Property is the flavour of the month. This is going to be a success. So there's still opportunity though, because in the old days when uh, these TV programs just started, they would get so much coverage that everyone would say you're paying top dollar. Then we went through a period where suddenly there wasn't confidence in the market and they were getting bottom dollar, you get a bargain. And I think the last couple of years you got maybe 50-50, depending on what unit you got, you might have got a cracking deal or um, yeah, you might, might have paid reasonable done it, dollars for it. Correct, correct. So, I mean, the history has shown that the marketplace has got a lot more to do with it than the fact that it's on TV. I mean, just because it's on TV, people aren't going off and actually paying 20, 30 percent more than the properties are worth. Uh, but I would suggest it's not a bad idea. If you're living in Melbourne, go and have a look at it and then uh, follow the uh, auction results and have a look and compare it how other properties have sold in the marketplace. Auctions are the clearest way to give you transparency on the true market value in the marketplace. So I'm curious. I'm going to you know, see what those results are. I want to see how they go. Sounds good. We'll all, uh, all tune in. Anyway, we'll catch you later on in the show, Tom. You're going to look after uh, Charles' section for us. Thanks a lot. Great. After the break, our thoughts on the viewer dilemma. You're watching Your Property Empire.